You guys have been asking for it, man. And finally, I have delivered. Courtesy of ProWrestlingTees.com, you can now own the official WWE Off The Script t-shirt. And to get yours today, all you gotta do is simply go to www.ProWrestlingTees.com slash Off The Script and you now can represent the number one fucking source for all WWE right here on YouTube.com. www.prowrestlingtees.com slash WWE off the script. And remember, hashtag fuck those other guys, man. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here, back with another edition of the number one fucking source right here on YouTube.com for all WWE. That is off the script. Number 73, part number three for your Sunday morning. I got so much news, I may actually have to do a part four for you guys later on this evening. But I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me. If you guys are not following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206, the absolute best way to keep up to date on what happens here and my thoughts and opinions on WWE, Call of Duty, Destiny, and whatever else comes to my mind, at JD from NY206, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, and Google+. Plus. Make sure you're following me all over social media. And if you guys don't own the first official merchandise for Off The Script, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WWE Off The Script. Let me know if you have one. Let me know if you are going to order one. And if you got one. And if you're going to order one. Make sure you tweet me a picture of yourself wearing that beast. Man, they are absolutely fucking beautiful. And I can't stress it enough. It helps me out. It helps the content out. It helps the channel out. And it's just a great t-shirt, man. So ProWrestlingTees.com slash WWE off the script. Let's get into the news, guys. We all know. That the Divas division is fucking garbage. It is absolutely an embarrassment on WWE TV. And it's painfully obvious that WWE Diva Paige needs some assistance in her war. Quote fingers there. Against Team Bella, Nikki, Brie, and Alicia Fox. Perhaps a couple of the ladies from NXT can help her, can help her get the job done. Well, according to PWInsider.com, they are reporting that NXT Women's Champion Sasha Banks and Charlotte will both be appearing at WWE SummerSlam. This is big news that no one in the IWC has reported. The two will team up with Paige in a six Divas tag team match against Team Bella. Sasha and Charlotte may end up pulling double duty, though, as NXT is set to hold an NXT TakeOver event the night before on August 22nd. While the card has yet to be announced, it's safe to assume that they'll be competing. The report notes that WWE's original plan would have been to debut Bayley instead of Sasha, but that changed after Bayley broke her hand. Sasha defeated Charlotte along with Bayley and Becky Lynch in one of the best women's matches I've seen in forever in WWE in a fatal four-way at NXT TakeOver Rival on February 11th, becoming the third champion in the brand's history. Nikki is currently on the second longest reign as WWE's D WWE Divas Champion. Nobody cares. Holding the gold for 226 days and counting. The belief is that she will break AJ Lee's record of 295 days before dropping the belt, they are going to stick it to AJ Lee because she is associated with CM Punk and they don't want anything CM Punk related to the WWE that has that type of record to it. So I assume Nikki will break AJ Lee's record, which is completely childish and ludicrous of WWE because though AJ Lee wasn't great at her craft, she was certainly better and more influential than Nikki Bella. But Sasha Banks and Charlotte making their way to the main roster. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Uh, I know for a fact if they mingle with the WWE Divas, they are certainly going to have to be put over. WWE Divas really need a shot in the arm. Sasha Banks and Charlotte 
will definitely be that shot of adrenaline that they need. Becky Lynch is ready to make the main roster. I know that for a fact. So is Bailey. I'm not a big fan of Bailey at all. I think her gimmick is completely fucking trash. I don't think that's going to get over just like Emma didn't get over with the whole bubbly gimmick and the fucking this bullshit that she started doing. Not going to get over on WWE TV, man. I don't give a fuck if you want to hug me or you want to hug the audience, man. You got to have some type of fucking ruthless aggression to you. That's that. Nobody wants to see someone fucking hug everybody and being, hey, I'm, I'm Miss Nice. Bullshit. Bullshit. You gotta have some type of ruthless aggression, man. You're a fucking professional wrestler. It's okay to be smiley and bubbly and fucking want to hug everybody, but you gotta get in the ring and get the job done. That's where she excels because the woman can fucking wrestle. But the gimmick is trash. That's just my honest opinion about that. And I'm sorry if I'm being a little bit upfront and blunt with it, but that's just the way I feel. Sasha Banks, NXT Women's Champion, Charlotte, I know they will do right on the main roster, but if they are going to align with Paige, this is the question, if they're going to align with Paige, Sasha Banks is a heel, right? They're going to turn her face for her main roster debut, obviously they would have to revert her back to a heel because she plays the heel so well, right? So she's a heel now as the NXT Champion, Running through the roster, then she's going to be brought up as a face. How is that going to work? How is WWE going to integrate that into the program with the Bellas for SummerSlam? Going to be a great match. I I'm, I can't wait to see it. I think they're going to excel on all levels, and it's going to be something to see. It's going to be a shot of adrenaline that the WWE women need, but how is WWE going to, you know, you know, come about this? How is this going to work on TV? How are they going to position Banks as a face? How are they going to bring up Charlotte? You know, how are they going to debut? Are they going to sneak attack Bella? Are they going to sneak attack Alicia Fox? I don't know. We're going to find out what's going on there. But that is the news. Exclusive information right there, right here on Off The Script. Paige uh, and Sasha Banks and Charlotte will be at SummerSlam against Nikki, Brie, and Alicia Fox in a six-women tag team match at SummerSlam from the Barclays Center. Speaking of bullshit and shitty storylines... During the July 6th edition of Monday Night Raw, Rusev and Summer Rae confronted the new couple of Dolph Ziggler and Lana, which is ugh, trash. Trash. Rusev, who has been out of action for over a month with an ankle injury, attacked Ziggler with his crutch, revealing he was no longer injured, which I enjoyed. It was a decent segment. That, when it got down to the brutality and cut away from the fucking bullshit, it actually ended up being a decent segment. For a final blow, Rusev grabbed his crush and rammed it into the throat of his adversary, leaving Ziggler motionless and in desperate need of medical assistance. WWE has issued the following statement concerning the health status of Dolph Ziggler. Further evaluation by medical staff revealed that Ziggler is suffering from a severely bruised trachea. He was released from the hospital Tuesday afternoon after being monitored overnight to make sure his windpipe didn't close. He's having issues talking and swallowing and will be out indefinitely. There have been reports in recent weeks over Ziggler's contract negotiations with the company, with PWInsider.com reporting that the former Intercontinental Champion had reached an agreement on a multi-year extension with Ziggler denied shortly thereafter, and assuming everyone, including me here on Off The Script, reported it, it was quickly denied that Ziggler did not sign an extension. While this injury may have something to do with his contract, the belief is that it's merely part of a storyline with Ziggler and Rusev likely to face off in a match at Battleground. Please, end it. End it. Ziggler deserves so much better. Rusev deserves so much better. Listen, you had Rusev, an undefeated monster with the United States champion, man. He was a legit heel. Now, he is a fucking pussy with Summer Rae. Seriously, this is what you turned one of your best heels in 2015 into a fucking pussy. This is what WWE Creative is doing with their summer, man. Ruining Ziggler, ruining Lana, making Rusev a fucking Russian powerhouse who fucking kicks people's asses and hates America. He's now a fucking pussy. I don't understand it. I don't understand how you fucked that up so badly. End this fucking program and move on. Ziggler deserves so much better. 
Lana is floating in the middle of nowhere Why you took her away from Rusev is beyond fucking belief. I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. You wanted to make her a superstar on her own. It's not gonna happen, man. It is not going to happen, okay? The crowd can chant Lana all they want. She don't even fucking wrestle. Put her with Rusev, have her be the spokesman, and have them go back and forth because we know, we know Rusev can speak for himself. He's a man. He's got a fucking set of balls between his legs, right? This is fucking bullshit. It's going to be a decent match, but the storyline is fucking gay. It is fucking pathetic. Seriously. Nobody gives a fuck. It's fake. It's forced. It's not genuine. It's not organic. You can see Lana and fucking Ziggle the way they interact. It's not real. It's not real. Anyone with a brain knows Rusev is dating uh, Lana. Okay? It's all over social media. Go to their Instagram. They got fucking pictures everywhere together, man. It's fucking stupid. And it's not organic. You see that it's painfully forced. And I can't stand to watch it anymore. End it. Seriously. Rusev, the pussy. That's what they turned him into. And if you don't agree with me, I don't know what to fucking tell you, man. I don't know what, I don't know what program you're watching. How much more, how many more time, how much more time I got here? I got fucking uh, a couple more minutes, man. I'm going to play it safe, even though I hope my channel's back to good standing after this weekend. It should be. But I got another news article here on Chris Jericho. Uh, on the latest edition of his Talk is Jericho podcast, former WWE champion Chris Jericho claims he suffered an injury in Japan during WWE's Beast in the East event on July 4th. As previously reported, Jericho faced Neville in the opening bout of the televised special. Jericho claims that he suffered a neck injury. During the dive spot, he and Neville got um, a rousing reaction for. Okay, I don't know what the fuck that word was, man. I was like, what, what is it? Rousing? Who the fuck uses the word rousing? Anyway, the Ayatollah of Rock and Roller revealed this information to fellow rocker Corey Taylor from the band Slipknot. If you guys don't know who Slipknot is, I don't know what fucking rock you're living under. Uh, Corey Taylor is the lead singer for Slipknot. Uh, while the extent of his condition is not yet known, Jericho did finish the match with Neville during the event. Initially, Jericho was set to face NXT champion Finn Balor on July 4th before WWE decided to hold Balor and former NXT champion Kevin Owens um, and that championship match in Tokyo, which are, I heard they're going to have a rematch at NXT TakeOver in Brooklyn. That should be very exciting. Given that Balor spent eight years in Japan honing his craft and becoming an international superstar and that Owens was making his move full-time to the main roster, it made sense to switch the matches and have Balor capture the NXT title from Owens at the event. Meltzer goes on to say, Jericho suffered a neck injury in this match with Neville in Tokyo. He uh, and the injury came when he caught Neville on a dive. The injury was thought to be serious at the time, but he's recovered from it and quickly um, will figure it out and it'll be gone within a few days. Jericho, who was asked to work with Baylor by name, did get to work with him during the weekend's live events, reportedly having an amazing match in front of the Japanese portion of the WWE Universe. Neville and Jericho put on a terrific match during Beast in the East. However, Neville would submit to Jericho's Lion Tamer following Y2J's quick usage of his knees during a red hour attempt and the man that gravity forgot. Man, I've yet to watch that pay-per-view. I will watch it as soon as I can. But that is it, guys. WWE off the script. Jericho, I wish him the best. Hope he gets well soon. Hope to see him back in WWE with a nice program that makes sense. We can only hope, guys. But this is off the script. Thank you guys for watching. I will be back with some more news today, part four. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you guys later on today, guys. This is JD. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.